In this video, we're going to take a look at Luminar 4 layers and masks. This is part of a series I've been working on for Luminar 4 tutorials, and I want to show you what the different layers are, how you can use them and benefit yourself, and also what the masks are and how they work with layers to make better photos inside of Luminar 4. Hi, my name is William Beam. I'm a portrait photographer in Central Florida. I'm also the co-host of a photography podcast called I Like Your Picture, so you may want to check that out. Today, we want to take a look at Luminar 4 layers and then masks as part of it. As the masks are going to work with the individual tools that you found, but they also work with layers. And I'll show you the difference and why you may want to choose a layer mask versus a tool mask. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with this portrait I have over here. And I haven't done anything to it right now. You can see I've got a couple of spots over here. What I want to do is change this background. And one of the best ways to do that is with a texture and a layer. So I may come in here and do a few things. So for example, I may come over here to the canvas tools, hit the erase button and just kind of get rid of some of these little spots that are on here as a way of prepping my photo to get started. And you can see it says creating new layer. Basically what it's doing is making an adjustment layer that is going to show us the background without those spots. All right, so the first thing we want to do for layers is this top icon over here. You can see it looks like a stack. It says layers when you hover over it. And think of layers as, if, I don't know if you've ever done graphic arts. When I was a kid, we had a graphics arts class. And the way you would build things up was stack things on top of each other in layers. Think of it as a magazine cover. So for example, you have a portrait taken and then they want to put text on it. They don't put the text on the same layer that the photo is. What they will do instead, they'll put a transparent layer on that and then they'll add the text to that. And then that gives them freedom to move the text around or change things to see how it looks without affecting the photo. Because once you put something permanently on a given layer, it's there. If you put it on a different layer above it as part of the stack, then you can change it, move it around without affecting whatever is beneath it. So let's go ahead and we'll get back on our layers over here. So you can see that we have two layers already. Here's our original down here. And that NEF is uh, the raw file from Nikon. And then there's an erased image layer that we've just created. Now, what we want to do is we want to replace this background. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create a new layer. You can see there are three types. There's an adjustment layer. That's what we just did when we removed the uh, spots that were on the photo. There's a new image layer. That's what we're going to use next. And then there's a create stamp layer. And we'll talk about that in a moment, but I'm going to add a new image layer. And what I want to do with this is add a texture. So I've got this one over here, Saffron Fields. I think that makes a nice background for the subject that I have. I'm going to click on Open. And you can see it says Adding New Image Layer. So oh, there it is. You don't see a thing about our portrait subject. But this is the magic of layers and, and why I think it works very well. It'll come over here with normal blend mode, which means it's going to show the whatever the image is as you see it. You can change the blend modes. And what I want to do for masking this out is go down here to either overlay or soft light, some of our contrast blend modes. Probably I'll choose soft light. But before I do that, let me show you something else. This button here that says layer transform. You click that. Maybe the layer that you added isn't in the orientation or size that you wanted. So if you click layer transform, you have these tools over here where you can kind of flip it uh, horizontal or vertical, or you can rotate it around. And if for some reason you need to change the orientation or the size, you can also come up here and grab a handle. Let me try that again. Grab this, and you can kind of change the size of the uh, layer that you have. Now this one I think is just fine. I don't really need to do anything with it. So I'm going to go ahead and just click done. All right, so let's go ahead and click on the blend mode. I'm going to change this to soft light. And here's what we're going to do. We're going to edit the mask. And notice I'm editing the mask on the layer, not on one of these tools down here. And I want to select a brush. And all I want to do is change this to erase. And I want to create a mask that the image that I have isn't going over my subject. So I make my bracket key a little bit larger so I can just kind of brush over where my subject is. And I'm going to do this very loosely. We're not going to do a really fine tuned layer mask here because that simply takes more time. But the idea is that you'll go over here 
and you'll get your mask just the way you want it first. It's good enough. You, you can go in here and fine tune these things, but for the sake of time, we're just gonna go ahead and hit done. And that's a quick way to use layers to change the background. Now, we do have other layers that we can work with. All right, there may be times when I want to put a layer mask on for one adjustment and then a different layer mask on for another adjustment. And I'm gonna show you how we do that now. So for this one, there are some things that we can't do with a layer. So if I go over here and click add a new adjustment layer and I wanna replace the sky, well, I can't do that. Because when I come up here to AI sky replacement, it's grayed out. The reason is simple, adding an adjustment layer is simply a transparent layer. The AI sky replacement is looking for a sky and it's not looking beneath the layer, it's looking at the layer you have selected. There is no sky in that layer, it's just a transparent layer. So if I wanna replace that sky, I need to come down to the original, the background layer over here, and then I can go in here and change the sky. So I'm gonna choose blue sky five, and I'm gonna come over here to our AI enhanced. I'm just gonna bring up AI accent, and that's a nice photo. It's a lot of people could stop right there, but I think there's more we could do with it. So let's go over here to our layers again. And let's say that for this adjustment layer, I want to make some changes here. And there's a couple things we can do. I want the changes to be specific. I'm going to add a luminosity mask. A luminosity mask looks at the photograph and it says, what are the color values from white to black and everything in between? And then it creates a mask that is white where the highlights are and dark where the shadows are. And you can see it right here. It's kind of difficult to see, but let's go ahead and uh, bring up the brush. That'll allow me to get this eyeball. And you can kind of see the red and is where my highlights are and not so much on the blues. You can come over and invert that, and we're going to do that on another layer. So let me turn this off. Now, you're not limited to just what you see in this layer. You can come over here, and let's say that we want to go to uh, our Pro Tools. And I'm mostly working on her skin tone with the way the mask is. So I might want to come over here to Highlights and bring a little bit of yellow into her skin tone, maybe a little bit of red, and just a touch of green. I might want to do this a little more. And what I'm doing is I'm actually looking at the photo as I'm doing this. So as I pull this over, you can see where it's going to be applied. There's a lot of yellow on there. It's more than I want to, but it's only being applied to the place that it wants. Now let's go ahead and do the same thing on another layer. And we're going to work on the background. So I'm going to go to layers, click plus, add a new adjustment layer. And I'm going to go ahead and make another luminosity mask. The difference being this time I'm going to invert it. So I'll mostly be affecting the shadows and darker areas. Click edit mask, click brush. We can turn the eyeball on that way. And you can see that it's kind of changed where it's showing things. Or at least it will once I come over here and say invert. Now you see that the red is more over here in the skies. And there's still some on her. It's not going to totally take it away because it is a kind of like a gradient mask. But it's not a gradient from top to bottom or from radial in and out. It's just where the highlights and shadows are. So let me turn this off. Now on this layer, I want to come back over to our pro tools and I'm going to work on the shadows. So I'm going to cool things down in the shadows. And you can see as I move this over, how it's kind of affecting everything. And it's like, you see that sky. If I bring this all the way over, it gets really, really dark. And if I don't like it in a certain place, I can still go ahead and hit the brush. I'm going to select erase. I don't really want it on her face and hair so much. So that kind of brings that out a little bit. And keep in mind, we have this other layer. Both of them were affecting the same tones just a little bit, depending on the map. So a little bit of it was on her face from the first layer and a little bit's on her face from the second layer. I kind of want the first layer to take over more. All I'm doing with this one is affecting the shadow areas rather than the highlights. So let's go back up to layers and we'll turn them off. So this is what we did after we replaced the sky and we did AI accent. As I turn these back on, you can see how it's affecting the color tone and the brightness based on what I've done with those individual layers.
So that's what you can do with layers and different masks. Okay, we've got a nice scene here. Let's take a quick look at what we can do with this. One of the things that for masking, I don't understand this, but this is the way it is. If you look at the light on the base photo, there is no option for masking. If you come over here to any of the other tools, you'll see this edit mask button. But for some reason, light is the only one that does not have a, a tool there for mask. So let's say that I want to do something with these tools, but only in certain areas. How in the world do I get that? Well, I'm going to go ahead and create another layer. I'm going to say plus new adjustment layer. And then I'm going to go back over here to light. And you see now I have edit mask. Since I have edit mask, I can use these tools with any of these masks. So we haven't talked about the gradient yet. Let's go ahead and do that. We'll just go ahead and put a little gradient right here. And you can grab this little center line and choose where the effect is going to be. And you can drag these lines apart to see how far the effect comes down. Basically, what you're looking for is anything on top of or to this side of the mask. Let me go ahead and turn the eyeball on. It's going to get the effect. But as you stretch these things apart, it kind of fades. So if you want things coming all the way down, you just kind of put them right there. And then you can decide where the fade point is. All right, so now that you've got that mask there, you can do whatever you want to. So for example, if I want to cool down the sky, I can do that. And I'm going to turn the eyeball off so you can kind of see as we make these changes. You know, if I bring this all the way over here, I warm up the sky. If I bring it all the way down, I'm kind of cooling it off. If I want to brighten up the sky, I can do that. If I want to make the sky a lot darker, way darker, we can go ahead and pull it over. And I'm kind of doing this too far for effect just to show you what it looks like. And you've got control of your highlights and shadows wherever the mask is. So if you're looking at the light tools and you want to do a mask, add an adjustment layer. And that will give you masking for your exposure and your warmth and temperature balance and so forth. Okay, on this photo, it's kind of flat with the amount of light. It's very flat lighting on her face, and you can see a lot of light on both sides of her. If I want to draw attention to her, probably the easiest thing to do is come down here and do a vignette. And I can just kind of choose my subject, say, put the dot right there. And then I can just kind of select the amount. I can select the size. And that kind of draws you in a little bit. You can go ahead and add some inner light, and that kind of brightens up where the where the uh, exposure is going. It's not always the best choice though. So I'm going to go in down here and hit uh, revert to original. Another option, you can come over to portrait and you can go over to the portrait enhancer and you can say face lights. So let me bring that up and I can bring some light just to her face. Do I look a little before and after? And you can see that I've lit up her face, but I haven't really darkened over here the way I want to. Let's undo that. I'm going to come over instead. I'm going to add another layer. I'm going to make an adjustment layer. And I'm going to make a radial mask. So you just kind of draw a circle. And what I want to do now is go over to light. And I want to lower the exposure of everything else. And you can see just that little bit really makes her stand out. I know there's face light, which is a wonderful tool to have. I know there's a vignette, which is another wonderful tool. But sometimes the best way to do it is just to put on a radial mask and put, plop it right on where you want the attention to go and then lower the exposure around it. It's quick, it's easy, and it works very, very well. Okay, this has been a look at Luminar 4 layers and Luminar 4 masks. The two of them work together. You can find masks in most of the tools except for the light tool. And the way to get it in the light tool is to create an adjustment layer. And that's just the one trick you need to know in case you want to use a gradient or something for exposure or contrast. And it, I think that's just a, a handy little feature to know about. This has been part of a tutorial series that I've been working on for Luminar 4 to understand all the various tools. I'll link that in the card above. Also, you'll find that on the end screen if you want to check out that playlist. There's a lot of uh, interesting stuff out there. We have one more in the series, and that's going to be on the Luminar 4 library. So we'll go over that in the next video. Please, if you've enjoyed this, I'd love it if you would like this video. And if you want to, please go ahead, subscribe and click the bell icon so you get notices next time I put a video out. 
I'd appreciate that very much. And I hope that uh, you enjoy the videos I've got. And if you want to share them with a friend, that's a wonderful thing too. Thanks so much. We'll see you next time.